Why do I make these videos? Well, there are many reasons. They can all be categorized into two main reasons. First reason, I want to help those who are going through similar struggles to feel less alone. I went through a phase where I felt extremely, extremely alone struggling with my anxieties during the lockdowns. Not being able to have interactions with anyone in person, I looked to social media to see if there were other moms who were also suffering from this cocktail of guilt, frustration, and exhaustion. And perhaps I was looking in the wrong places at the time. I couldn't find anyone that I could really relate to. Social media gives this illusion that everyone else is happy and have got their shit together. We tend to curate our social media feeds to only show perfection. The perfect spread of brunch, the perfect smile, the perfect outfit, perfect settings. Not many people are willing to show their messes, their tears, their failures, or their breakdowns. While no one is hiding their struggles on social media with ill intention, and we all do it because it's just the way we've all been raised to gain acceptance from other people. This natural tendency for us to compare ourselves with other people and what we see in, on their social media feeds only makes us feel more alone and ashamed of our own imperfect lives. At the time, I thought, how nice would it be if people shared the nasty and the difficult aspects of their lives more? Because while perfection can be candy to the eye, it's not exactly relatable. But now I'm thankful for this experience of loneliness. It's inspired me to show up more authentically on social media and in life in general. Because I never know if someone who's been feeling alone in their own struggles might find some comfort or solidarity in something that I happen to share. So that was the first reason. And the second reason is a lot more selfish. I make and post these videos to help me face and overcome my fear of rejection. Majority of people in the world have insecurities relating to some areas of their lives. I, for one, have suffered from some deep-rooted insecurities that have crippled my ability to make good and healthy decisions in the past. I have always thought that if I'm not good enough at something or if I'm not perfect at something, I should just keep quiet about it. For example, I used to love to sing as a little girl. My mom even has a 60 minute long tape recording of me just belting out song after song when I was one and a half years old. And as time went on, I became increasingly self-conscious and felt the need to protect some acquired self-identity. And so I only sang when no one else could hear me. I had the same insecurity towards basically everything that I enjoy doing as a child, be it art, music, dance, or just speaking my mind in general. I kept comparing myself with people who were way better than me, which didn't exactly help boost my confidence. I also feared what people might think of me. In fact, every time before I post a video, I start doubting myself. I start hearing these critical voices in my head saying stuff like, Nobody cares. Who the hell does she think she is? Ugh, her voice is so annoying. <sighs> She's such an attention seeker. Shut up. 
Precisely because I want these voices to stop having control over me, I need to walk up to the fears that trigger them in the first place and let them know that I am running the show now. All right, listen up, fear. You no longer get to decide what I do with my life now. I do.